In this video, we are going to talk about the semi-solid anhydrous formulations for topical use. We will talk about ointments and how to prepare them, the absorption basis and also the emulsion basis. First, uh, if we have a look to the uh, typical schema that we follow, we are going to move within this uh, part of the column, hydrophobic excipients and absorption bases, emulsion bases, to prepare hydrophobic ointments and water absorbing ointments. And in the next video, we will add the aqueous phases to uh, these two to prepare the hydrophobic creams. Hydrophobic excipients are those that contain a water index below 10%. This means that in their composition there can be a slight amount of water adsorbed to them, but in very low quantities. They are characterized mainly by their occlusive character. This means that they induce hydration because they form a film onto the skin that does not allow transepidermal water loss, and therefore uh, water is accumulated in the stratum corneum and uh, below in the other skin layers, so uh, skin as a result looks uh, more hydrated and is more hydrated. Um, the API can be in the formulations either dissolved or also in suspension form. We have different kinds of hydrophobic excipients, mainly we are going to use different kinds of vaselines, silicones, vegetable oils, or semi-synthetic glycerides. In this slide, you can see a typical example of the Spanish national formulary, which is the salicylic vaseline. This is a formula for a 5% content in salicylic acid for an amount of 100 grams. The API in this case is salicylic acid. Uh, it's a 5% uh, and it's the API in this case. And as excipients here, we have liquid paraffin and solid paraffin. They are fatty excipients of different viscosities that in the end produce the right consistency. However, in this case, the liquid paraffin will be used also as a levigration agent to produce um, the flow of the salicylic acid and therefore to make it easier to be incorporated in the uh, solid paraffin and in a more homogeneous way. In this video here, we are going to see how to prepare this formulation. You can see here we have prepared the material and also the packaging material. Here uh, we can see um, the needed excipients, salicylic acid, solid vaseline and also the liquid paraffin. We have the tube and mortar, pestle, and also the uh, spatulas. We have to wait first the API, and once we have the appropriate amount, we can transfer it to the mortar to reduce its particle size. The excipient is also weighted, and in this case, we are going to incorporate the API into the excipients in cold. So first, we, redu re we reduce the particle size of the API as much as possible with the help of the pestle. We add the adequate amount of liquid paraffin to be able to start levigation. So it's dispersed all over the uh, solid powder and then it's mixed. Once it uh, is completely mixed in an homogeneous paste, then we can add the solid paraffin to the mixture because the API is now able to flow appropriately. As it is dispersed, not dissolved, but dispersed into a similar lipophilia excipient, then it will be incorporated to the solid paraffin in an, forming an homogeneous dispersion. We will add the solid paraffins in small amounts to make sure that it's completely homogeneously dispersed. Then, once it's prepared, we are going to put the formulation 
in one of these paraffinite papers following a row. Then we can make a tube out of this paper containing the formulation. The diameter of this roll should be small enough so that we can put it into the tube and then pour the formulation down. It's really of major importance to avoid any presence of oxygen in the mixture, so we have to very well remove the air. For that we can uh, tip a bit so that the formulation goes completely down to the tube and then we will pressure the tube until removal of all air inside. Then, with the help of the spatula, we can um, fold the tube twice so that the patient is not injured with the tube. Finally, we can label the tube and uh, give it out to the patient in, at the final end. Then we also have the so-called anhydrous absorption bases. They are made of hydrophobic vehicles with addition of a water inhaled surfactant. This surfactant can be added artificially or can also be present in the uh, material by its own nature. So uh, these absorption bases are able to absorb small or higher amounts of water. Uh, this amount will determine their uh, water index. It's the percentage of water they can incorporate in a stable manner. These anhydrous absorption bases can be directly used as ointments to reduce, uh, to induce hydration and also as APIs vehicles. So um, the main uh, products that are used as anhydrous absorption bases are uh, different wax types, also lanolins and its derivatives, and mixtures of Vaseline with lanolin, for example, Vaseline with fatty acid, and other mixtures. Um, in the lab, we are going to calculate the water index of lanolin, which is a product which is uh, uh, present in this slide. It has a yellowish um, color and is quite viscous and sticky. So one of the ideas of the manipulation of lanolin is to study the organoleptic properties of this product. Then uh, we want to check the consistency of uh, this kind of absorption base and we will prepare a so-called cold cream by addition of water. Cold creams are those that are uh, not very stable and once they are uh, placed onto the skin of the patient, they release the water phase, it's evaporated and produces a, a cool effect and that's why they are called cold creams. And also we will calculate the water index of this product. We will use 10 grams or 100 grams of, ex of excipients to add uh, small proportions of water. We will add it in fractions of 0.2 milliliter to 10 gram of excipient. Uh, and after addition of each amount, we have to stir very well until uh, there is an amount that cannot be incorporated into the absorption base. In this case, we can calculate how much has been incorporated, so we won't have to take into account this last fraction for the calculation. Then we can relate uh, the amount of water added to 10 gram to 100 gram, and we can see what is the water index of this product. According to the Royal Spanish Pharmacopoeia, this product should uh, incorporate at least 20 milliliter of water because its water index should be over 200 percent. And finally, we also have the so-called anhydrous emulsion bases. They are made of an oily vehicle containing or not water in oil surfactants, but they are prepared by addition of oil and water surfactants, one or more. They can be combined. Um, they are normally uh, products that are more washable than those uh, used before, and this means that they can be removed from the skin and also from the clothes of the patient in a much easier manner. 
Um, they normally incorporate also a fatty alcohol which uh, stabilizes its uh, stiffness um, and also they are products that can form very stable oil and water emulsions by additions of uh, water. Finally, we always have to highlight this, but it's of major importance, they are never used directly. They are only used to add some water to prepare a cream in the end.